Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. I'm Brother Bill, and this is Morning Prayer for Sunday, February the 11th. It's the sixth Sunday after the Epiphany, and week six in the Psalm Cycle. Thanks for joining me. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, make a joyful noise to God, all you lands. Alleluia. Psalms 66 and 67, and please recite them with me. <clears throat> Alleluia, make a joyful noise to God, all you lands. Sing forth the honor of God's name, and make God's praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Through the greatness of your power shall your enemies submit to you. All the earth shall worship you and shall sing to you. They shall sing to your name. Come and see the works of God. God is awesome toward the people of the earth. God turned the sea into dry land, and they went through the flood on foot. And there we rejoiced in our God. God's might rules forever. God's eyes behold the nations. Let not the rebellious exalt themselves. O oh, bless our God, you peoples, and make the voice of God's praise heard, which holds our souls in life and suffers not our feet to be moved. For you, O oh God, have proved us. You have tried us as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. <clears throat> you laid affliction upon our backs. You have caused enemies to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out into a wealthy place. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay to you my vows, which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer to you burnt sacrifices of fatlings with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats. Come and hear all you that fear God, and I will declare what God has done for my life. I cried to you, God, with my mouth, and you were extolled by my tongue. If I have evil in my heart, you will not hear me. But truthfully, you have heard me. You have attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed are you, which have not turned away my prayer, nor taken your mercy from me. Alleluia, be merciful to us and bless us, and shine the light of your face upon us, that your way may be known upon the earth and your saving health among all nations. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you shall judge the people righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Then shall the earth yield her increase, and you, our God, shall bless us. You shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear you. Alleluia. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Make a joyful noise to God, all you lands. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, chapter 10, beginning at verse 23. Then Jesus looked around, and he said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words. But Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded, and they said to one another, Then who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God all things are possible. Bull. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children, or fields, for my sake, and for the sake of the good news, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this age, houses, brothers and sisters, mothers and children and fields, with persecutions. 
and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Here ends the lesson. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. Jesus makes this profound statement in today's Gospel lesson. And with it, he challenges conventional notions of status and power and success. And he challenges his disciples, both then and now, to a deeper reflection on the true nature of greatness. When his disciples first heard these ideas, they are shocked. How unsettling the message is. After all, they, like we do today, lived in a world that typically measure one's worth by wealth, outward achievements, and social standing. But in today's gospel, Jesus offers a radical inversion of these values. First, he tells us how difficult it will be for the rich to enter the coming kingdom, and then how the most prominent citizens of the time might rank last. Like the money changers in the temple, he overturns the hierarchical structures of society. He's teaching us that God's kingdom operates according to a different set of values, one that's based on humility, service, and sacrificial love. While to be first in the eyes of the world might signify prestige and influence or material wealth, Jesus warns us that such earthly standards do not guarantee eternal significance. Those who grasp for prominence at the expense of others will find themselves cast out, while those who humbly embrace their lowly positions, who serve others with selflessness and compassion, will find themselves exalted by God. This passage challenges us to reevaluate our priorities and our aspirations. Are we pursuing temporal accolades or eternal treasures? Are we seeking the approval of our fellow human beings or the commendation of our Creator? In a culture obsessed with upward mobility and self-promotion, Jesus beckons us to embrace a lifestyle of humility and service, following in the footsteps of the one who came not to be served but to serve, and who gave his life as a ransom for many. Ultimately, this is a message of hope and reassurance for all who feel overlooked or marginalized. It assures us that God's kingdom is a place where the last shall be first, where the humble are exalted, where true greatness is measured, not by worldly standards, but by the depth of one's love and devotion. As we ponder these words, let's be inspired to live lives marked by humility, compassion, and faith in the promise of God's kingdom. Amen. Now let us pray for the church and the world, for the mission of the church that it may extend the love of Christ to all people. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For Jennifer Ann, our bishop. For Brother Joe, our community servant. For all of our church leaders. For all clergy and ministers. That they may be ever faithful servants of word and sacrament. For unity in the church. That our scandalous divisions may be healed. For the poor, for the hungry and the thirsty, and for the destitute and the unemployed, that we may share with them the riches of creation and free the world of poverty and famine. For Joe, our president, for Katie, our governor, for all the leaders of this nation, city, and state, for the leaders of the nations of the world, that they may bring justice and peace in all the earth. For those who've died, especially Martin, Sarah, Brother Stephen Edward, William, Brother Walter Arthur, Stephen, Tom, and Fran, 
and for all who serve in harm's way, and for all the victims of terrorism and violence. <clears throat> Rejoicing in the fellowship of Francis and Clare and all your saints, let us commend one another and all of our lives to Christ our God. Our beloved, which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Alleluia. Give thanks to God, who has made us to share in the inheritance of the saints in life. Alleluia. A canticle from Paul's letter to the Colossians, and please recite it with me. Alleluia. Give thanks to God, who has made us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of Christ. In Christ we have redemption, through Christ's blood the forgiveness of sins. Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Christ were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Christ and for Christ. And Christ is before all things and by Christ all things exist. And Christ is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, that in all things Christ might have preeminence. For it pleased God that in Christ should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of the cross to reconcile all things to God by Christ, things in heaven and things in earth. Alleluia. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Give thanks to God who has made us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Alleluia. We trust in the mercy of God forever. And glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generations to generations, in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Amen.